So my name is Ahmad Yunus. I'm a product line manager here at VMware. I'm covering uh, vCenter server lifecycle for on-prem, uh, VMware Cloud AWS, and Edge. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey folks, my name is uh, Sachin Thakar. I'm a director of R&D in the uh, HCX uh, business unit. And uh, as the title says, we're going to talk about uh, VMware uh, HCX. So we kind of covered the, the management view of things, and we talked about you know, some workload mobility options, whether it's uh, you know, vMotion, cold migration, uh, you know, even leveraging content library to do some of that. <clears throat> but HCX is kind of its, its own self-contained uh, workload mobility option. And the beauty of it is, like I said, it's kind of the Swiss army knife of workload mobility because typically to do workload mobility, you have to have a you know, bunch of stuff in place. You have to kind of make sure that the network is in place, uh, you know, making sure that you don't have that latency. How much data am I gonna move? All, all these requirements need to be in place. The, the hardware between the two sites, HCX removes all those boundaries, as well as the versioning, and you'll, you'll see that here in a little bit. So basically we wanna you know, connect, secure, migrate, and protect the applications across your hybrid cloud. So with uh, VMware HCX, we don't really care about vSphere versions, right, whereas Typically before, you would have to be on a certain version between on-prem and the cloud, so like vSphere 6.0 or you know, to whatever. Now here, we go as far back as some older, you know, out of um, support versions, as far back as vSphere 5.0. So if you have those legacy versions, legacy applications sitting there, and you don't want to replatform and you want to bring them over to the cloud side, you can do so with HCX. And not only you know, from on-prem to cloud, but we can also do um, on-prem to on-prem or cloud to cloud. So you're, you're not restricted, there's no boundaries, multi-site, things like that. We will stretch the actual network. So if you have virtual machines living on a particular VLAN, we will stretch that VLAN across and it will give you some capabilities to be able to bring that VLAN over if you choose, or you can move those workloads to another VLAN later on. And again, we can do this, uh, you know, depending on your SLA, we, we have different uh, mobility options to make sure that the, the app itself is uh, mobile and doesn't uh, have uh, time and we uh, will be able to hit that SLA. So one of the things that we'll first do is we will extend that network, no matter what uh, VLAN or VLANs, because we can do multi. Which allows us to migrate the <coughs> workloads from on-prem to another SDDC. And then we have NSX on the target side. And, and having NSX there, allows us to modernize that data center, right? So now you get more enhancements on the target side that you normally wouldn't have on the on-prem side. Because with HCX on the uh, source side, we'll support a distributed switch as a starting point, but then you can move it to another distributed switch or you can leverage NSX on the target side as well. So one quick comment here is there's a lot of legacy out there, right? And we wanted to basically be able to modernize to a latest, greatest SDDC. So it could be any type of networking on the source side, right? A lot of them are just going to be predominantly VLAN-backed networks, but it could be running on a standard vSwitch. It could be running on a you know, VDS all the way back to a 5.0 that uh, Imad was sort of referring to. Or it could be uh, Cisco Nexus 1000V. You know, there's a lot of uh, you know, uh, legacy gear that's out there that you're basically stuck and you can't modernize to the latest cloud infrastructure types, the modern SDDCs move to NSX. So there's no requirement for NSX on the source site, but uh, it allows you to modernize to the NSX on the target site if you choose to. The other thing to be aware of is for the networking pieces, you can leverage your internet or you can do uh, direct connect as well. So we'll support both. Um, so here, what we're looking at is you can do, again, using for the on-prem to on-prem version, it requires the NSX hybrid connect licensing. 
versus the uh, VMware Cloud on AWS, um, which is natively built in. And then we have the Cloud to Cloud, uh, which is a, a new under tech preview uh, capability, so I don't know if you want to. Yeah, sure, I mean, basically the premise around HCX is multi-site hybridity, right? You have legacy sites, you may want to move some of the workloads to your modern private cloud sites, right? So that's this uh, data center to data center kind of within your infrastructure bucket. There is moving out to a cloud provider, right? Like VMware Cloud on AWS, or we have many other cloud providers supported uh, with VMware HCX. And then of course, you know, it's not a legacy to new one-time move, Mobility is really an ongoing thing, right? And that's where you want to also support modern to modern. It, the modern could be a private cloud, it could be a, uh, a public cloud, so it's really a cloud to cloud type of an offering. Uh, and that's uh, the last uh, block down here at the bottom. Excuse me. What are your cloud provider for the cloud to cloud? Yeah, there's a, it's a good question. There's a long list uh, that's out there. So if you think of uh, many of the cloud providers that are out there in the, the VMware Cloud Provider Partner Network, um, there's many out there. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a, quite a huge list. I mean, it ranges from you know, the IBM Clouds and the OVHs and NTTs, and, and it's really worldwide, uh, the traditional VMware service provider partners. Is that a web page uh, with the list? Oh, sorry? Do you have a web page with the yes, list? Yes, all of these are on the, uh, the hcx.vmware.com uh, website. Okay, so as Sachin said, you know, for us it's any to any. As long as there's a vSphere environment, uh, we'll, we'll be able to connect to it and, and move it. Um, you know, as far as performance, we have native dedupe compression built in. Uh, security, we use uh, SweetB uh, encryption to, to move and uh, secure the, the connectivity. And then we can actually move the VMs at large scale. So we can do things like bulk migration, moving thousands and thousands of workloads um, with no issues. And we've done it over, what, a weekend's worth of time? Yep. No, this is really for full data center evacuation, right? It's, it's a large scale mobility solution. It's, hey, I have a legacy site. My Colo is expiring or what have you, I need to evacuate the site. And uh, we've had situations where customers have said, hey, look, you know, um, my contract's up. I terminated my contract. I need to be out within 30 days. And that's not just move the VMs. That's I need to, you know, get rid of the, the gear, which is actually generally the long pole, uh, despite what folks may initially believe. So, yeah, And the other thing is you can actually schedule these. So you don't need to be sitting in front of this watching hundreds of VMs go across the screen. Uh, so you can schedule them, oh, and the, the other thing is it retains the MAC and IP address, so there's a global view within HCX, so there's a functionality that you can say, for example, hey, once it moves over, I want uh, VM tools to, to be updated or, or things like that. So as we go through the demo, we'll point some of that stuff out. So also, as Sachin mentioned, we have some use cases for HCX, so one of them being uh, data center evacuation. But then we also have you know, data center consolidation. You're shutting down you know, that, um, that, you know, a couple of data centers. You want to move everything to one centralized location, or you want to move those workloads across different locations. Now you have that flexibility. Hardware refreshes. This comes in really handy when I have to do, let's say, a vSphere upgrade on-prem. So now I can leverage HCX to move all my workloads, let's say to VMware Cloud on AWS, do my vSphere upgrade on-prem, and then I can move them back if I choose to. Um, and then data center extension. So you know, now I have the capability to basically spin up new data centers in locations that I would never have had access to uh, prior. So one of the workload mobility options that we have is you know, HCX vMotion with vSphere replication. And the beauty of this one is that we can do this with you know, no downtime whatsoever. What it winds up using is it's using both um, you know, vMotion and vSphere replication. So it uses vSphere replication to replicate the VMDKs from on-prem to the destination, being VMware Cloud on AWS. And then uh, at some point, it will schedule the Delta Sync and that's it. It just cuts everything over once the vMotion kicks in. So again, there's no downtime whatsoever. You can schedule this or you can do it uh, hot depending on your choosing. 
Yeah, so a couple comments here is we have, you know, three or four types of migration types that Imad had alluded to in the previous slide. You know, there's the bulk migration, which is warm, um, and then there's V-motion, which is live. But the issue with V-motion is that it's very serialized, right? Serialized. It's a lot of memory state that's being copied, et cetera. This is really bringing together the best of both worlds, right? You are able to, in wholesale, migrate many VMs, uh, and it'll seed the initial set of data using vSphere replication, and then it's doing that vMotion finish, right? So you get the semantics of no downtime for your, for your workload, but the initial sync is happening with a much more efficient parallelized protocol with vSphere replication, which is using the, uh, the change blocks directly out of the hypervisor. And then, of course, all of this is being uh, deduplicated and compressed in the <coughs> flight. Is, is there any way to seed all of those VMs using something like um, the snowball from AWS, if you're moving it to AWS, instead of trying to send it all the bits over your wires? Yes, there is. In fact, that's something that I think we announced in preview in the last uh, AWS reInvent. Re yeah. uh, so yes, you can um, get the data there any way you wish and then do the finish. Now, mm -hmm. if you were doing it all in runtime, you know, without having to ship a, uh, a device and all that, let's say you're doing you know, a few thousand VMs and you don't want to go through the, the DC ops logistics and all that, then you can do it all live as well. I mean, through the, through the software on your pipes as well. Okay. Yeah, and all right, quick question. Um, do you get an option when you failed over um, how long you keep the copy of the VM on-prem? Yeah, that's a good question. We have a feature we call the recycle bin feature um, for exactly that reason. So what we do is we move it to a folder, um, which we call our recycle bin. We disconnect the VNX just so in case someone powers it on, you're not going to step on yourself, right? Um, uh, but it is there, and then you know users can clean it up at, at, at their leisure. You know, um, So that is a feature that's there. There is one caveat. When you're doing vMotion, it's a move, right? Yeah. So when you're doing a vMotion, that the onus is on the user to, hey, take a clone and, and do effectively that. But when you're doing the bulk migration, um, we are storing a, a uh, original seed uh, prior to the switchover in a recycle bin folder. Yeah, uh, having done migration, not using HCX, but using vMotion, yep. for large VMs, there is that risk of if there is a problem and you want to fail back, you now need to wait for the whole vMotion to happen to go back again. So with this, yep. um, the, the fail back if the migration is successful, there's a networking issue mm -hmm. or whatever, is a lot quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely, I would say that. And then this, because we have WAN optimization baked into the pipeline, if you do need to fail back, uh, you can imagine the dedupe and compression, the data is already seeded on this hot cache that's there, so it should be that much faster. So there's kind of multiple um, multiple things that will help us out in, in that case. Yeah, and especially with the bulk migration. The bulk migration, like Sachin said, we'll, you'll actually see it within the UI, and it we actually add like uh, migrated, like a long sit and migrate it to it. So that way, if you did need to power back on, you can just power off the cloud side, power on the on-prem side, and you're back in business. The other thing here with, with HCX is we actually deploy a proxy for vMotion. So traditionally with regular vSphere vMotion, it goes through uh, you know, the, the host, so uh, the NFC. Whereas here with uh, HCX, we leverage the proxy to do the, the vMotion. So it looks just like a, a host would within the UI. Yeah, and that's, that's really bringing us two things uh, just to add there, right? So there's one thing which is, hey, I have security concerns moving to the cloud or even between my two infrastructure domains. I don't want my VM KNX, my vMotion, my management network, whatnot, connected directly, right? Or I might have M&A kinds of scenarios where there's like overlapping IP space, right? 10 slash 8. Um, how do you insulate all of that but still allow the guests and the actual data to transfer over? So that's what the proxy is going to help us with. Okay, and then we talked about the, the live vMotion, which is basically leveraging the proxies to do the same thing. So, um, and we're going back as far as uh, vSphere 5.5 to, uh, to use that. Yeah, and there's two, this, just one quick nuance there as well, sorry, Imad, is yeah, no when you're going from 5.5 straight to 6.7, that's definitely one uh, value-added benefit. Uh, the other is uh, the ability to inject EVC, right? So a lot of these legacy sites, they have ancient hardware, right? They may be running Westmere, they may be running Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, what have you, and now they're trying to modernize to Broadwell, Skylake, you know, newer generation dip sets. So how can you do that without kind of dumbing down your entire cluster with like EVC kinds of settings? So we're able to basically, even from the legacy site, inject basically CPU flags that allow the VM to come over without actually reducing your target cluster. So all net new VMs that are landing there get the new, 
you know, instruction set right away versus the ones that are moving over can still move without uh, any downtime. So it's kind of a win-win from that perspective. So let's just show them. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Does that mean that you are able to uh, apply different EV EVC modes for different VMs from different clusters? All within the same SDDC? Yeah, so think of it as basically uh, giving you, in a sense, per VM EVC. So your, when your VM, when it's nice. coming over, if it's on a legacy chipset, is going to be still running on that legacy instruction set. Now, there's basically an option when you reboot the VM the next time, right? Um, whenever there's a planned maintenance or what have you, it can come up on the new chipset or new instruction set. So there's kind of that uh, incremental transformation that we want to enable, right? Another big use case for that is upgrading the VM hardware version, right? So maybe for patching and, and you know, there's all the spectrum meltdown kinds of things, you want to update VM hardware version, same kind of deal, right? Uh, through a check of a box, and it can happen with the bulk migration while you move, or it can happen, um, you know, uh, on your next reboot if you moved it over live. Which, again, benefits using HCX versus using traditional like vMotion or cold migration or things like that. Okay, so we've got a demo that we're gonna go through. Um, so here I'm logging into my uh, on-prem data center. And we're here within the vSphere HTML5 client. Now, one thing you'll notice is that HCX is just a plugin for vCenter once it's deployed. So we wound up deploying the uh, HCX manager. Then we deploy the, later on, that's the first thing you need to to get started is the HCX manager. Later on, you'll see that there's a few other uh, appliances that we wind up deploying for the L2 stretch and the WAN optimization. So once we log in, we'll, see, we'll be greeted with our, our dashboard. Now, the dashboard, when, once you get started, will kind of change uh, later on. After we've migrated some VMs, you'll see that uh, the count will start to go up. It shows you here that the network that we have extended is one. Um, the site pairing, which is important. So here I'm paired from my uh, on-prem SDDC to my VMware Cloud on AWS. Now the pairings uh, can be one to many. So I can come down here and do another uh, on-prem to the same SDDC. There's no restrictions there. Um, and then it shows us here kind of in the map view what the connectivity looks like. So here we'll start our migration. And this is the global view that, that we were talking about. So here you have some options that you typically wouldn't have natively when you're doing other workload mobility um, use cases. So here we can actually force the VM power off. We can retain the Mac, which is already uh, checked by default. We can choose to upgrade our uh, VM tools or hardware if we choose. So if we're actually moving from older virtual machine hardware or tools, we can now use this time to, uh, to take that uh, option to do the upgrades. But then we have global options. So we can select the destination vCenter folder. We can select the uh, cluster that it's going to, as well as the storage. Now one thing you notice here is I didn't say network. Network happens down at the VM layer. And you have an option here to select, let's say, do you know, use the same network for all virtual machines, or you could do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Because as we know, not all virtual machines live on the same network. Then we can remove snapshots, or we can force the unmount of uh, ISOs, which again, that's something that we would have to think about traditionally when doing a, uh, a vMotion. And then the other thing is the type of workload mobility option we want to select. So we have you know, HCX with vSphere replication, we have a bulk migration, we have cold migration, and then we have live migration. And Imad, if I can highlight just a couple other things that can be done. We were talking about, you know, upgrading hardware version, upgrading tools. Likewise, for your storage, you know, you can go from thick to thin or, or vice versa. So, you know, if you want to do some right sizing in line, uh, those are capabilities that are supported. There's also ability, now, our general premise is, hey, if you can move your VM like for like, no IP, no Mac change, you're better off. But there's also an advanced option where you could re-IP or you could do things like run a script inside your VM if you need to update some, some data in flight during your move. So it's about running a script inside the VM, but could I <coughs> run, so I'm just thinking, because you're going back to some quite 
old versions, there's some really strange things you had to do with like 2008 for CPU masking in the old versions to stop them blue screening. Could I remove that on the way and those sorts of things? So uh, on the VMX, the infrastructure proxies will actually handle that because one of the functions of the infrastructure proxies is that version compatibility. All right. Uh, so, so there's a whitelist and it's not going to drop a new version of, uh, of your VM hardware version and have legacy VMX properties. So there's, there's definitely that level. The script is more stuff inside the VM. So you have an option to say, hey, run the script either pre-migration or you can say move the VM and run it post-migration. There's some injection points there effectively. Okay. Okay, we're getting the one minute mark, so we gotta kinda go ludicrous speed here. Um, so here we're gonna select our, we have a resource pool, and we got some VMs in that resource pool, so we're gonna start going through some of these global options. And we're gonna select the destination folder, which is VMware Cloud on AWS. We're only able to access workloads. Then, again, on the cloud side, we can only select the compute resource. That's the only uh, place we can migrate to. Same thing here for the data store, the workload data store. We're gonna keep the format as the same, and then we're gonna select uh, Cloud vMotion with vSphere application because we want zero downtime. Then we have the option to schedule. So basically it will do the replication, and then it will do the cutoff for the vMotion, or we can do this without a scheduler. It's, it's your choice. The other thing about this is, as you're selecting the virtual machines, there are checks in place to make sure that if I select the 100, that there's enough storage on the other side to accommodate for that versus finding out you know, halfway through that, oh, I can't move all these virtual machines. So here, we'll actually do the checks and start moving them. So you'll start to see that uh, here, it will, it will go through. And then we have the option to either <coughs> reschedule, we can remove, or we can even abort uh, the migration if we choose to. So I'm going to, for the sake of time, fast forward a bit. So as, as they're replicating from the on-prem side to the cloud side, we're gonna log into VMware Cloud on AWS. We're gonna open up vCenter server. And we're gonna log into, again, the HTML5 client using our cloud admin credentials. And in here we're gonna go to storage and we should see in our workloads data store that the VMDKs are being replicated across. So you can see now we got, you know, some of our VMs have started the land here um, and they're replicating over. Again, no downtime to the virtual machines whatsoever. And then we're using, and then vMotion takes place to sync the deltas. Just gonna fast forward a bit here. So here you can see from the console side that we've already moved at this point 54 VMs and we still have 46 to go. And in here, there, there's a bunch of information that you can use like if there's any alerts or anything like that that we need to take a look at. So, um, and then there's the activity log of also what's taking place. So kind of a centralized console of everything going on. And you can toggle back and forth during the migration to, to take a look. And at the end of this demo, we winded up moving, I believe it was like 100 or so v virtual machines. So again, with all with zero downtime, all on different networks, and we're able to extend. And after the fact, we can either migrate that network over to VMware Cloud AWS, or we can create new networks. So that's also another capability within HCX. This is really something our customers script quite often. They use PowerShell, they use a lot of the APIs. Of course, you can use the UIs, and they're able to move, you know, let's say 1,000 VMs in a given wave, which could be over the course of a weekend, right? And so there's a, the uh, you know Fortune 100s have a lot of these customers that say, hey, my app can only be down on Sunday morning from you know 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Or, or what have you. Uh, that's their use case. I don't know. I mean, we got we're probably over time, but I didn't know if you wanted to cover any of the tech preview stuff and then maybe give them a little bit of yeah, snippets sure, into sure. what maybe coming. I'll go quick. So we have something called the multi-site interconnects that are coming in. They're effectively a refresh of our HCX interconnects. So as Imad mentioned, there's a separation of our control user and guest plane. And what that really is intended for is we have the data movers, if you will, 
We have the, the VM guest extenders, right? Layer two extension for your, for your guest networks, et cetera. And then you have your control plane, which is more like a management, uh, you know, where your UI is running, where you're running the APIs, et cetera. The interconnect's really a refresh of that. Um, it's allowing you to also modernize potentially from NSXV to NSXT. We're seeing a lot of our, uh, our customers uh, having that use case. So this is really uh, something that uh, enables some of those functionalities contextualized to your workload and your vSphere infrastructure. And then likewise, uh, kind of going right into that, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, is you can also do cloud-to-cloud -cloud, uh, connectivity, right? So it's not a one-time, hey, I moved from my legacy, I'm one and done. It's really dynamic cloud rebalancing. It's long-term hybridity. That's the end goal here. And that could be between your private modern SDDC, your SDDCs out in the cloud like VMC, um, and uh, kind of the inner balancing between them effectively. Anything coming that you can kind of there's talk also, about? There's also some other interesting things. You know, As you imagine from vSphere application perspective uh, that are coming, that are on our roadmap, um, that are around how can I use the seeds that I'm using for DR, such as integration with SRM, and using those seeds. Really, we're seeing a continuity between disaster recovery and disaster avoidance, which is really mobility, right? And so you can use those seeds and say, hey, I see a hurricane coming in. I'm just going to go ahead and do an HCX vMotion with vSphere application and use that seed that was really my DR seed, but actually do a vMotion rather than a traditional failover. And then there's, of course, those niceties of integrations of the you know, SRM runbooks and all that that you get over the top. So the high-speed data movers that you get with HCX, the version compatibility, and then the management runbook. So there's, there's a lot of the synergies that we see coming together, and that's really a trend we're seeing in the market. All right, and with that, that concludes. Can I just ask one quick question? Um, you've got those data movers that are doing the layer two extension. Mm -hmm. um, so say you move all the VMs over, um, you kind of want to move that gateway um, into the NSX environment in VMware Cloud Note, but you don't necessarily control the routing for that. Is there a kind of pause in the workflow to say, go and speak to your networking team, get that flicked over, and then... It, you then, could, yeah. you could. This is traditionally what we think of as a network swing, right? And that's really, we have a, a macro workflow which basically says, hey, uh, we will unstretch our L2 extended network. So let's say your default gateway was a VRF on a physical box or something on your source, you can actually uh, connect it over and it'll wire up the interface to your NSX Edge on your target infrastructure. So all those logical switches are connected to the NSX Edge um, and it'll unstretch the network. So in a sense, you're not really working with your, you don't need to actually go work with the ticket process of the network teams and all that. You're really just ditching the network, the original physical gateway and you're now moving to an isolated subnet on, on the cloud. So you can think of it that way. That's the network mobility aspect of it. Okay.